if you're making this project from scratch, this board is 45 and a half. So from the longest point at the top to the longest point at the bottom where the angle is the furthest away, that's 45 and a half inches. So that just gives you an idea of the measurement. The shelves, these are all 13 inches long. So from here to here is 13 inches. You could probably add uh, or subtract that to 12 inches actually because that would help out just a little bit there. And then um, this one is 12 inches wide. This one is 10 inches wide. And then this one's eight inches wide. The reason why I said 12 inches would work out a little better, it's just a better use of materials. But with the length we had, we could go 13 inches. So you can kind of customize this a little bit. But then I just stepped these all down, 12, 10, and eight in the width. So that kind of helps you out there. So those are a couple of the overviews on the, on the measurements. Plus I showed you the angle in the, the picture and then the length of the taper to help you figure out what size to cut that. The bout's going this way. You're going to stand the direction that the bout is going. Alright, so laying out where you're going to make these slots is probably one of the most important parts to get started. So I'm going to measure from this corner over 8 and an eighth of an inch. So this is 8 inches plus 1 eighth, and that's the center there. And then the center to the next one is 11 and a half, and the center from the next one is 11 and a half. Now what's really critical is that the other piece, you know, is the same. It's going to be a mirror image, but the measurements are the same. Um, it is nice to have these shelves spaced out, but if you want it to be like the sample, that's the measurements I used. Then I took my jig after I found the centers, and I pushed my jig onto, onto the mark, and I lined up that mark I already put on here, and then I traced the jig to know where those would be. So you just have to make sure you're using the right jig, right? This one says right side, all right? And it should be going the same way as this angle. So if you use the wrong jig, all these will be backwards. So you have to make sure that you use the right one. So this one's the one for the right leg. So if you're facing the finished product, this is the right leg. And then the left side jig would be for the left side. All right, I have the back saw here. I'm trying to use this jig. My goal is to line the saw up right here on the sides of this jig. I have it clamped down to my work surface. And I'm really trying to go easy. Um, it'll cut the best if you're, not, if you're not applying very much force. So I'm just trying to go nice and easy, trying to keep it flat up against the jig so I have a straight cut. Right. One of my biggest concerns is that you don't go too deep. You're trying to stop right when it gets to the end of the jig. All right. It's going to be a little hard to see because you're going to have some sawdust. So you're going to kind of have to watch for that. So I do that side. And now I'm going to move on to this side. Try to keep it nice and flat up against the, the jig again. Now this side is about done. Alright, go ahead. Okay, what I've done here is I've made a pencil mark half inch in. Alright, so there's the saw marks I made. I made a pencil mark a half inch from this surface down. And that will help keep it to where it's... Uh, you, know, you want these to be the same, right? Nice and even. So now I'm going to chisel this part out. Chisel, super sharp, okay? That cutting edge is really sharp. Both hands, you want way out of the way when you're using a chisel. All right, listen to me. I've had like my worst injury with the chisel, all right? Is that crazy? All these power tools and the chisel got me. So you got to be, they're super, super sharp and it will slice in your hand really easy. So help me out by keeping your hands away from that cutting edge. It won't take much force to do this. 
So you can line it up and just barely tap it and it should start to break out. All right, then you can, you don't even, even need to use a hammer on some of this. You're just gonna push down and it'll start to shave it off. You can experiment with both angles of the chisel. All right, technically when you use the chisel this way, this is the, the diving angle. So it's actually gonna wanna dive more like this. If you flip it over, and that, that's, that helps to keep it uh, straight. So really, you know, you can experiment with both sides, but sometimes you'll find that this side's more effective because it doesn't dig in, it just scrapes across. Okay, so then you're trying to remove these, these pieces. So I started working on this one. I got those two removed and you're trying to look down there to see if it's all flat. All right, and you're trying to get that good. You can put a sandpaper in a, a block of wood and sand this to try to get this a little more flat if you want. So if you look at this one, this one's not quite as flat as the other one I just showed you. So I need to remove a little more, a little more material right here because there's a little bit of a hump there. So that's what I'm trying to do. Just remove these sections on here. There's six of them. All right, after these slots are in on you know both boards, you can drill up. We're going to drill a pilot hole through here. So the drill bit, just a twist drill bit, probably like 3 16 uh, I'm probably still going to wear my safety glasses in case it breaks off or something. But this diameter isn't super important, probably around 3 16 of an inch. Um, could be a little bit, a little bit bigger, smaller. You don't want it bigger than the head of the screw, but it could be a little bigger. So I'm gonna line it up in the middle, and then I want it about an inch in. All right. So um, you know you don't necessarily have to measure, but you want it about an inch in from each side, and you want it centered this way. So I think I did pretty good there. That first knuckle is about an inch, so I'm, I'm really close. But uh, if you want to measure it off, it might turn out just a little better. I just want to do that to all the slots. So on both boards, I'm trying to hold the drill nice and straight. Okay, that'll be the hardest part really, is holding the drill straight. Um, so I'm gonna do two more right here. Can switch the drill bit and what we're going to use a Forstner bit for this this is a flat flat shoulder drill bit we're going to try to drill up to this shoulder here and this is called a Forstner bit the diameter is 3 8 so that's important because we want to make some plugs for this so we have to have the right diameter bit for the plugs to work so it's a 3 8 drill bit now I'm going to go right in this I flipped this over see so now I'm not on the groove side anymore I'm on this side, and I'm just going to go down until I hit that shoulder. So I don't have to go very far, and I'm not pushing very hard, because I don't want to drill it too deep. I don't want to go all the way through, okay? I just want to go down about a half inch. So notice what I'm doing here, that I'm not going all the way through. I'm only going down a half inch. It's not even quite a half inch deep. All right, so when I come over here, see, I'm not all the way through. If I make it all the way through, then I'm not gonna be able to use, use the right screws. Okay, I wanna show you the setup. So I'm getting ready to put on the bottom shelf here. Uh, that's the wider shelf. And um, I have this end clamp, so it's flat on that long taper that we have. And then I have just a, this box of screws just propping that up for me. So now I can just concentrate on, on drilling. You could put some blocks of wood in there. It doesn't have to be this box of screws, but find something that you can wedge in there to help boost it up. So now I can just concentrate on putting the screws in. So we're gonna use some coarse thread screws on this. 
Um, I think we're going to use inch and a quarter, inch and a half. I'm going to test it and then I'll let you know. But we're going to use um, some coarse thread screws and we'll put that side on and then we'll do the other side and then we just line up the other two shelves same way so they lay flat and we'll connect it all together. So taking a little extra time here just to prep this will save a lot of frustration. Um, after I get this leg on, I could also clamp it this way, clamp it together between the two legs. All right, now I'm working on the next side. So to make this work out better, I measured from here to here, from the table down. And I want those measurements to be the same, okay? Just putting it up there isn't going to necessarily guarantee that it's even. You actually have to measure from the table down. Then you're going to want to push the shelves down all the way. This one's wanting to flex back, so I might put a clamp right on that one. The other ones are staying pretty flat, but that middle one's, or when I go to screw that middle one in, I might put one hand up here and push down, and that way it will help keep that flat. All right, I'm going to show you how to drill some plugs today. Um, on the side of our shelves, we made a 3 8 hole so we could cover that screw with a, a plug. So this is a plug cutter. It just has a little point here. This point pushes in and out to help keep the plug from getting stuck in there. We don't want to drill more than about a quarter inch deep. Uh, otherwise, the plug gets stuck in there. Um, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to, we have to set this up on the drill press. It has to be a certain diameter. So we drilled some 3 8 holes. So this has to be 3 8 across there. If you grab the wrong size plug cutter, you're going to make plugs that are the wrong size. So my board has to be clamped in here. You could just use one of these squeeze clamps. You don't have to use a vise like this. But it has to be clamped down to the table. You have to use this in a drill press. Don't use this in a hand drill. It just breaks the tips of these off. So it's really important that it's used on a drill press. Um, I always work on the end of the board so that way I don't waste the whole board. I see kids that drill plugs right in the middle. It just wrecks the whole board. So I'm going to turn this guy on. Go down about a quarter inch. You know, maybe more like three-eighths of an inch, just a little more than uh, a quarter inch. And uh, drill a couple of these. All right, so we had a plug stuck in here. This is what I was trying to explain to you, so I drilled a little too deep. Here's a flat tip screwdriver. I'm real gently, just real gently, because I don't want to damage the plug cutter. I'm going to try to pry this plug out. And I just kind of keep working around it. I might even turn this a little bit and work out from this side. Okay, and it'll just kind of, it might even break the plug a little bit. So you can see this one's wrecking the plug, but that's okay. I just carefully work around it. And I might even go get a smaller screwdriver, but I think you kind of get the point. Okay, so now you can see my plugs there. I'm just going to take my flat screwdriver and break some of these out. And you're just trying to break them with the grain. They'll break out kind of easy if you just take it easy on them. All right, now I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to grab the shelf. Now instead of, don't put glue in the holes, okay? It works better if you just take one of your plugs. I gotta get finish getting it out here. So here's one of the plugs. I just put a little glue on the end of my finger. All right, and the point, the spot that has a dot is the one that goes down. So that has a dot on it. So I'm gonna put this back in. And uh, the grain's going this way, so I'm trying to match up the grain a little bit. So I'm going to grab another one. Dots going up or down, I mean. Line up the grain. Now I just take my hammer. And you're not going to be able to smash it all the way in, but you just tap it a little bit. Oh, I guess that one I'm going to be able to go all the way in with. But most of the time it won't go all the way in. It'll be sticking up just a little bit, and that's okay. Because we're going to sand it down next. So... I just take a little bit, a little bit of this, 
Put the dot down. All right. Tap it a little bit. All right, and then move on to the next one. All right, one of the last steps on this, other than sanding, is to maybe put a support. You could put one of these at the bottom shelf and then maybe one at the top. This will just help with diagonal support. So if your shelf is wobbly at all, like if you set it down on the ground and it, and it kind of rocks side to side, you definitely need one of those, okay? If you did a really good job with your screws and they're all in there good, they're all tight, you might not need that brace. But, it, you know, if, if you're going to be using this a lot, this is a, something you could add pretty easy. Just cut, measure between here and here, cut a piece that fits, and then put a couple pocket holes in there, and then screw that in. So that would be a really easy fix just to make sure this holds up really good. Without that, this shelf, these shelves have a lot of strength going down, and, of course, they're not going to go up but they don't have a lot of diagonal strength so that's something i've been kind of worried about a little bit with this you could also do like um you know a triangle triangle and and screw that in but this is going to be a lot probably a little bit more sturdy and since this is the bottom shelf this will also keep that shelf from bowing if there's some weight on it all right well i hope you enjoyed building this project um, the last step after sanding is is painting it Whenever you paint something like this, you are gonna to wanna to follow the grain. So you wanna paint with the grain direction. Uh, maybe use a primer first and then, and then the regular paint or maybe just two coats of paint. Sometimes we get paint that has paint and primer in it. All right, um, let me know what kind of problems you uh, came across when you're making this so I can try to make this better uh, in the future. The next step is to sand these plugs down with the orbit sander. So I would just lay this flat on the bench, take your orbit sander, and um, just go across it. Try to get those plugs flat. Keep the sander flat. You don't need to, to tip it um, or hold it at an angle. Just, just keep that flat. Then you're going to go around this place. Uh, with some finer sandpaper like 100 grit or 200 grit somewhere in there and just try to clean it up you know make some edges a little bit softer so you're not going to get any splinters off it spend about a whole class period sanding just make it better any pencil marks get rid of those get it all ready to paint um, 